will be back for Parents' Night at Marley School on the 21st. I have a fundraiser in Springfield on the 21st. Yeah, but we both signed the attendance slip. But Edward, you promised you'd go. Yes, and we both knew that my time was not my own until the election was over. And after that, it'll be something else. You know, it wouldn't kill you to spend some time, any time, with your wife and daughter. You knew what you were getting into when you married a politician. Besides, we are spending the whole weekend at the lake house together with my brother. That's something, isn't it? Huh? All right, little Red Riding Hood. Let's go see your Uncle Mason. All right, Your Majesty. Hop in. Have a seat. Well, thank you. You're very well. Are we going a little fast? I didn't think you were in a hurry to get there. I'm not, trust me. You're too hard on your brother. You know, Mason is old enough to know that there's more to life than going to parties and becoming an alcoholic. He's not an alcoholic. Well, not for a lack of trying. And it certainly doesn't help my career to have him and his latest girlfriend keep popping up in the gossip pages. He's great with Marley. How are you holding up back there, kiddo? Lie down in the back of the car, all right? You're okay. I'm just gonna take care of something. services. Yes, please. I need some paramedics. Uh, Ryan Park Road. There's been an accident. Hurry, please. There is an injured child. Uh, 20 miles outside of town, just past the Big Bend. Hey, please. Are you holding up, Mrs. Carr? You should lie down for a while when we get back to the house. There are all those people coming. They're expected to be taken care of. Which is why we hired a caterer. You have to look after yourself now. If you don't, there'll be no one left to look after us. You are all we have left now. I just can't believe they're gone. Edward was... He was... Everything he was, he owed to you. We both owed to you. Carnegie conducted a series of experiments involving direct stimulation to the brain. Small electrodes were attached to the cranium while the patient remained in a fully relaxed and conscious state. When certain portions of the cerebral cortex were stimulated with an electrical charge, the patient performed actions which he later could not recall when the session had concluded. When confronted with the videotape of evidence, the subject clearly in denial 
devised elaborate stories to explain away the phenomenon, but never admitting that he himself could have been responsible for those actions. Does anyone have any questions? Dr. Hardy. Yes? The photograph doesn't do you justice. Thank you, I think. Uh, my name is Mason Charles. Oh, right. You're that photographer. And you're Congressman Charles' brother. That's right. I'm sorry about your loss. He was a good man. Actually, do you have a moment? It's a personal matter involving a child, my niece, Marley. It's been over a year, and she's had some problems dealing with the loss of her parents. And, uh, I was hoping you could give me some advice. You're a bit late. I actually gave up my practice a little more than a year ago. Actually, you might find this interesting. It's kind of like what you were talking about today. Someone doing things they don't know they're doing. Such as? Slamming doors, moving things around, breaking things. And she can't or won't admit that she's doing them. I think she needs to talk to someone. And I take it that you've tried talking to her yourself. Uh, she's a great kid. And we used to be friends. But ever since the accident, she's put up a wall and... Uh, I can't get through to her. I don't know how to figure it out. I was hoping you might meet with her and help me figure it out. Call the number on this card, and you can ask to speak with Sophia, who's my assistant, and I'll have her give you a referral. Actually, I was hoping that you might spare some time, and uh, maybe we could come to some kind of financial arrangement. It's not about the money, Mr. Charles. Mason. I can't take on any new patients. Sorry. I'm late, and I have to go. Dr. Hardy. Please. If you have second thoughts, my number's on the back. Call me anytime. I'll think about it. I hope you change your mind. You were going to be late for school. Now, that just won't do. This is beautiful. Is it Limoges? I wouldn't have a clue. It is Limoges, 19th century. Been in the family for years. Mrs. Carr has been in this family longer than I have. She raised Edward and me. And when we grew up, she became our housekeeper. Must be nice to have somebody who's that devoted that works for you. I think she's prouder of the Charles family than I am. She took Edward's death very hard. And she treats Marley like she's her own daughter. Here she is. She's, she's beautiful. Yes, she is. Especially when she smiles. Which is something I would very much like to see again. You know, I do know some very good bereavement counselors. 
You know, grief is such a complex area, especially for a child, and survival guilt can be such a powerful emotion. Often the victim can have trouble expressing themselves and in extreme cases feels responsible for the death. Have you spoken to her doctor? Her doctors, my doctor, specialists, experts. There's nothing physically wrong with her. I'm out of my depth here. I don't want to overreact, but I don't know what to do. She just won't open up to anyone. Healing does depend on the willingness of both parties. Is Marley here? She's at school. Mrs. Carr's going to pick her up at three. We have to keep an eye on her in case one of these things happen. I'm curious. Why did you choose me? I didn't. Marley did. We were at the library and your book was on the counter. She picked it up and saw the picture and said, I think she would be kind. That's nice. So, uh, will you meet with her? does she do this? A couple times a week. Pretty flowers. Don't worry, she won't bite. Your uncle thought that maybe you want to talk to me. Well, I'll let you talk. And I will see you at the front gate and walk you back to school, okay? So, you're the writer. Sort of. I saw your book in the library. Yeah? My uncle told me you were a doctor. Yeah, now I just write about stuff like that. People are never who they say they are. What's your book about? My book is about people that are sad and might want some help. You look really cold. I am. You are. Me too. I think you should be inside, shouldn't you? I'm supposed to be at school. I'm supposed to be at work. 
No. Will I see you again? Only if you want to. What if I don't want to? Then you won't. I'm late for school. I was always taught that problems that began in the family should stay in the family. Bringing complete strangers. Everyone's in such a rush. Kind word here, helping hand there. It always strikes me that any problem given time will take care of itself. I think you're right. To a point. Uh, but 12 months is a quite a long time in a little girl's life to show no improvement. Well, which I think Mrs. Carr is a sign that more help is needed. I'm sure that Mason is compensating you for your efforts. Oh, my, my interest in Marley isn't financial. No, of course not. Mason wouldn't have hired you if he thought that it were. I'll leave you to your business. Hey, Marley? Now, I was thinking... Maybe this weekend, you and me, just you and me, we could go to the park. What do you say? If you want. Okay. See, I was also remembering about something you and your mom and dad used to talk about. What was it? Was it about getting you a puppy? Would that be okay? Yeah. Yeah? All right, then that sounds like a plan, yeah? Okay. Well, why don't you go and say hello to your visitor? Down in the dining room. Sure. All right. Hi, Marley. Do you want to sit here? No. I was school. Okay. You don't teach me what I want to know. What do you want to know? Why my parents died. Oh, I don't know if I can answer that question. Can I sit next to you? Maybe do the puzzle with you? You know, I've often thought that life is actually a little bit like a puzzle, and every piece is a bit like an experience, and sometimes the pieces fit together, and other times they don't. And I think that this piece in your life isn't fitting. I wanted to ask you about something that I found. Tell them to stop. Who's them? You shouldn't read other people's letters. They're private. 
Your uncle told me, Marley, that some very strange things have been happening. And I want to know if you know what he means. He means when things get moved or broken. Right. And are you the one that's doing the moving and the breaking? No. Then who is? It's not me who's doing it. I understand that we all need someone to talk to. And I also understand how difficult it is to find somebody who's actually going to listen. That's what they want me to do. Listen. But I'm not going to. Well, that's what I'm here for, to listen. If you'll let me. upset with me? Marley? Is the doctor in? That depends. You look tired. Thanks. Messages are there and the research you wanted for the next chapter is there. So I'm done. Have a nice night, Sophia. How's the kid? She's sad. She's sad. She, she misses her parents. This case seems to be really getting to you. It is. She, um, she reminds me of an old patient of mine that disappeared. You want to talk about it? Um, Megan Bellflower, 16 years old, good family, good academic record, healthy, and her parents started having some problems, and, uh, Megan came home from school, and just, her parents were having a terrible argument, and her mother was crying, and her father had been drinking, and the father stormed out of the house, got in his car, hit a patch of ice, and just slammed into a tree and just died instantly. That's horrible. On the one year anniversary of the father's death, the mother comes home, comes upstairs, and then finds Megan on the floor in like a pool of blood with lacerated wrists. The mother just had her committed to a private psychiatric hospital and just said, put my daughter under the battery of tests and psychiatric observation. And she, she wouldn't communicate with the other doctors and the nurses. And then I started working with her. And a couple of weeks into this, we were in our daily consultation. And she said, I'm, I'm hearing voices. And I was distracted. And I said, I'm going to get you your medication. And I... I, I got up and I walked out the door and I could have sworn that I closed the door and then I came back inside and Megan had dis, uh, disappeared. What happened to her? Uh, they don't they don't know they haven't found a body but I mean we're gonna assume the worst right? So that's why I quit your practice. I, I didn't treat her like a person. I treated her like one of many, many patients that I was seeing that day. And I treated her like a case study. And I think what actually Megan needed was just me to listen to her. It's tragic. Hi. How is detention? Uncle said I had to talk to you. No, you don't. 
I wanted to apologize for opening up your letter the other day. I don't usually do that. And I just thought I was trying to help. Do you have to tell them what we say? No. It's something called doctor-patient confidentiality. Am I your patient? If you want to be. Maybe we can, I don't know, we can be friends. Good. So I'll see you at the house tonight. Okay. Get in and stay warm. Bye. Hey, Faye. Come on in. Thanks. I made a little breakthrough today. Marley agreed to meet with me. Yeah, I heard. I heard. It's great. Yeah. Oh, she's just up finishing her homework. Here, let me take your coat. Oh. So, uh, I hear you two are really getting along. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's early days. Uh, she has to trust me and just know that I want to help her, and I think it's going to take some time. Good. Uh, I'll go get her. Okay. Oh, oh, uh, Faith. Yeah? Um, a friend of mine is opening a restaurant tonight, and I thought maybe uh, you and I could go. Oh, no. No. Marley's my patient, so that would confuse our relationship. Okay. Well, I won't take that as an outright uh, rejection. Maybe, uh, maybe a rain check? I'm gonna go in the room now. Okay. I'll go get her. Sorry. I have a very bad memory. Why don't you just write down the answers? I'm gonna definitely do that, too. Here we go. Teachers ask me questions. Like what? Like why I don't talk to the other kids. Why don't you talk to the other kids? They don't talk to me. I don't think they like me. I think they're scared of me. Why do you think that they're scared of you? Because bad things happen when they're around me. When you say that bad things... Where's my tape recorder? I just put it down on the table, right? How did you do that? They did it. Are they here now? Someone is. I don't know, I won't listen. Can you see them? Sometimes I can see something out of the corner of my eye. They want me to look, but I don't want to. And so they keep trying to talk to me, but I don't want them to. And sometimes it makes them angry and they do things. Can't you make them stop? Can't you make them leave me alone? I'd like to. Make them stop! Make them leave me alone! moved by itself. Mm -hmm. I took my eye off of it for one second just to look at my notes. 
And she didn't touch it? No. It ended up on a shelf um, in a puddle of water, and she said that they did it. Back in grad school, you were pretty locked into the whole objective rationality thing. Do you still think like that? What are you suggesting? That when you're dealing with human beings, science and psychology only take you so far. Mm -hmm. Troubled child nearing adolescence, inexplicable physical phenomenon for which the child denies responsibility. It's classic poltergeist phenomenon. And you're saying that a poltergeist is responsible for this, that it could possibly be a ghost? There are thousands of well-documented cases of families being terrorized by objects being thrown or broken by an invisible something. Almost always, there's a disturbed child nearing puberty in the home. The belief is that the changes in the child's body create an enormous amount of unfocused psychic energy. And they're feeding off of the energy? Yes, to produce physical effects. But I must warn you, However they manifest themselves, they can be very, very dangerous. Dangerous? Poltergeists have been known to start fires, to throw objects, and on occasion, to physically attack people. Okay. I believe that there's a rational answer for everything. Just because I don't have the right answer, it probably means that I am asking the wrong question. And yet your tape recorder moved across the room in the blink of an eye. Right, but it could have been a trick, right? Just because I don't know how she did the trick doesn't mean it's necessarily supernatural. If you really believe that, then why are you here? I was, I was hoping that you could help me figure out what I should be asking her. She keeps on saying that they're trying to speak to her, and she won't listen, and they're getting very angry with her. There are forces, forces that we don't understand, and from time to time they try to say something. If it's important enough, they will find a way to say it. Or possibly it's her repressed feelings that she's struggling not to acknowledge. That's very Freudian of you, and if you can tell me how that would make a tape recorder fly across the room, I'll believe it. No, it takes two people to have a conversation. They may be talking, but for the moment, Marley isn't listening. And may I suggest, with the greatest of respect to our friendship, neither are you. Mom? Sweetie, why didn't you call? Hi. I was taking a drive, and I didn't know that I would end up here. Well, whatever the reason you're here now, it's all that matters. Want some tea? No, thank you. Beautiful, aren't they? Azaleas were your father's favorites. You were probably too young to remember. So, how are you? I'm, uh, I look tired. Really? I'm, uh, I've... I've taken on a case. But you quit the practice. I know, but I said that I would do a favor for a friend. It's a little girl lost. Seems to be a recurring theme. She says that she can see and hear people that aren't there. Oh. That sort of delusion's pretty common, isn't it? Not when the imaginary people are moving things. Why would you take a case like that? Because I didn't know that it would be a case like that, Mom. And now that I've taken on the case, I'm actually going to find out some answers for my patient. And for myself. Your father wanted what was best for you. He may have made some mistakes. You know, if my father wanted what's best for me, he wouldn't have constantly threatened me and said that he would send me to a psychiatric institution. We didn't know what else to do. I mean, you were either talking to yourself in the basement or... Mom! Having some secret conversation Every in the child has imaginary friends. Not ones that talk back. And I, for one, don't know too many swings that push themselves. That was a long time ago. Well, then maybe it's time you cut all of us, including yourself, a little slack. Your father was a good man. And even though you don't believe it, he loved you very much. None of us are getting any younger. 
And there are things in life other than work. You know, like a husband, children, <sighs> grandchildren. <sighs> I, I wouldn't want you to have any regrets. You have to go. said that you didn't sleep very well. I take it the amorphanol is not working? It's too bright in my room. Right. Why do they keep the lights on? Because we don't want you to hurt yourself. I thought that was why you were here. It is why I'm here. I just... Megan, I, I just can't be here for 24 hours a day. Are you still hearing the voices? Yes. And I take it that your medication is not working. Does it look like it's working? Have you considered that maybe these voices are actually a part of you? 
They're not a part of me. They're real. I know that that's what you want to believe, Megan. You don't believe me. You said you'd listen. I need someone who'll listen. Megan, I would like to believe you. You think that just because you can't hear them that they aren't there? When they die, if they have something important to say, they come back and they find someone who can hear them. Do you see this? He made me do this. He spoke to me today. Your father? It sounded like my father. And he told me what he wanted. Me. I was surprised to see you back so soon. Well, I'm never afraid to ask for an expert opinion if my patient needs it. Expert? Flattered. I think some people would think you were taking quite a risk. My line of work isn't exactly mainstream. Yeah. But I'm glad we finally get a chance to work together. I think it's important to ask for objective input from someone, just in case I'm missing something from the outside. Like maybe you shouldn't have taken on this case. Guilt can change the way we see things. How we see people, how they see us. You're saying that my experience with maggots affected Marley. Guilt acts as a kind of a magnet. It breeds fear. Negative supernatural elements are drawn to that. The child is already experiencing something that she and you don't understand. Right, and my guilt is amplifying that. Maybe. Or maybe Marley just knows subconsciously that there's something you can't let go of. Do you remember how before you were talking about the unexplained physical phenomenon that happens around children? Yes. Okay. There was a time when I was younger, a little girl, that I thought that I could see and hear things. I weren't there. There was this little girl that I used to play with on my swing set in front of my house. And my father hated her family, so she used to sneak over so we could play together. And then when she was eight, she was killed by a car in front of her house. That's horrible. But she didn't stop coming over. And I remember one day, my dad, he takes me by the arm, he grabs me. He brings me back into my room, opens up the door and throws me inside and says, if you don't stop talking to those invisible people and listening to those invisible people, I promise you that I'm going to send you to a psychiatric home. And then you know what he did? He locked me in my room for the whole summer. She has stopped coming. Why do you think she did? I just, I think that I stopped listening. I don't want to be away from Marley for two weeks. No, that's not it. I'm going to show you a surprise I got for you. Okay. 
Marley, I'll be right back. It's just down there. Okay. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> She's just in here. Hello there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> come here, come here. That's all right. It's okay. Picture of the pounds. Are you gonna make her smile? Mm -hmm. I think that she will. How could anybody leave a dog alone? I think that's just about the cruelest thing anybody could do to a dog. Does that apply to people as well? No, I don't think we're as genetically hardwired, but yes. What about you? You spend a lot of time alone? Are you uh, saying that I need a puppy? No. Uh, but is there a significant other? Um, there have been others. They, uh, just haven't been, you know, very... Significant. Right. <laughs> I know what you might be thinking. But, um, I'm just trying to gauge a level of interest. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not that sure I know what interests me anymore. Dinner and a movie. Nice bottle of wine. Underwater welding. Close. I think that you're close enough. Really? Enough. Okay, go get Marley. Okay, you ready? Hi. What are you doing? Um, I'm done. You are? That's very good. Okay, well, I will definitely check this tonight, but guess what? Marley. There's somebody out here that wants to meet you. Who is it? She doesn't have a name yet. That part's up to you. It's a puppy! Oh. There you go. Take it. Say hello. Settle down. Okay, girl. Yeah. Uh. I don't think I want a dog. It's okay, sweetie. You just have to give her a little more time. Yeah, you know what? It doesn't matter, okay? Puppy's scared of them. Disorder, socially isolated, communication difficulty with guardian figure. Said her hey, file or yours? You shouldn't be reading that. You want the pictures now? Uh, no rush. Waters three, simple atoms, H2O, produce a substance with almost magical properties. Hey. Now, who can tell me which form of water is most dense? Marley, you know the answer. Liquid. Yes, very good. And like glue, water molecules stick together so we can push Pencil through the bag and through the other side, and it won't leak. Can anyone guess why? Stop it! What's going on over there? She jabbed me. I didn't touch her. Marley must be imagining things. Or lying. She lies a lot, Mr. Cross. I want you both to stop accusing each other. She broke my cell phone and said she didn't. I didn't touch your cell phone! You were the only one near it. It wasn't me. Marley, sit down. She's the one who threw you jars out the window. 
Marley, is this true? No. I didn't do anything. Leave me alone. Marley, calm down. are terrified, but no, nobody was injured. It's not possible. Then how do you explain what happened to our fish tank? And just how do you think a 10-year-old girl makes an aquarium explode? I have no idea. But I do know she is no longer welcome at Pemberton. We have the safety of the other girls to think about. The safety? Of it the... won't be necessary. I will tutor her myself. I taught you and Edward. I'm sure I'm capable of doing the same for Marley. Good. Good. coming from, don't you? Your friend, Dr. Hardy. Faith. You're not around to see it, but she is upsetting Marley terribly. Marley needs help. From her family, Mason. We can do this ourselves. She asked me the other day if I believed in ghosts. That doctor of yours is putting some very strange notions in Marley's head. Well, she's the best qualified in her I'm field. not saying she's not qualified. I'm saying that in our case, she's doing more harm than good. Thank you for your opinion, Mrs. Carr. But I, I happen to like Faith and I trust her. I don't like her. And I don't trust her. So, Mason told me what happened at school today. Do you want to talk about it? When you have a bad day, do you want to talk about it? That's a very good point. I think you're a very smart girl. Why don't you think about if we play a card game? This little guessing game. What do you think? 25 cards in the deck. Each one of these 25 cards has one of five symbols. Okay? The symbols are a star. down, you have to guess with the card you pull up which one of the five symbols is on the card, okay? Ready? What is it? Circle. No, cross. It's okay. Try again. Star. Try again. Again. Circle. Very good. Square. Hmm. Water. That's pretty good. Make it a little harder now. You are going to pick the cards yourself. All right, you choose. Water. 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 
someone tell you what was written on those cards? No, I could just tell she wanted them all to be water. Is she in the room right now? Is it? No. Come here. It's not. But I promise you that I'm not going to leave you, okay? Let's go. It's okay, Marley. Everything's going to be okay. ghosts? Ghosts? I'd like to think that those of us that have passed on come back and visit those of us that are still here from time to time and check in. Why do you? I have this, uh, this friend, Nikita, who believes that just because you can't see something doesn't mean it's not there. Where are we going with this? We know that Marley's in a very fragile state, right? She's saying that she can see people that aren't there. People the rest of us can't see, people that have passed on. And, and you believe this? No, but Marley does, and that's the most important thing. Okay, so, uh, what's your diagnosis? I don't have a diagnosis yet, and I'm doing everything I can to try to find it. I know, I know. I'm grateful. But the problem is, Mason, I can't, until we identify the root cause of the psychosis, there's nothing that I can do to help her. So, as her guardian, I would like permission to hypnotize her. Hypnotize her? Yes. I mean, is it dangerous? No, it's not dangerous. Not if it's conducted by a qualified hypnotherapist. And, and there's no drugs involved? No. There are no drugs of any kind. Are you comfortable? Yeah. Good. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to imagine that you're flying. Flying across an ocean. Clouds above you, the water below. And there's a beautiful sunset. And when you look at it, the heat from the sun warms your face. And it makes you feel very relaxed. Good. And I want you to take a deep breath. Good, and let it out. Let it all out. I'm going to ask you to count backward from 10 to 1. Can you do that? Good, then let's start at 10. 10, 9. You're going to be okay? 7. It's a relaxation exercise. 5, 4, 3, 2, I want you to go back in time, all the way back to the first thing that you can remember. Can you do that? Yeah. And what do you see? Is it working? Wait. Marley, can you hear me? Marley. Marley. Tell my mother I didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. I was just trying to scare her, and I guess I took too many pills. What's the matter with her voice? I, I want to talk to Marley. Tell that bitch this isn't over. She won't get away with it. 
You tell her I'm watching and I'm waiting. Right, that's enough now, Marley. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to count backward from ten, and then you're going to wake up. Ten. I, I didn't kill anybody. I couldn't. I couldn't do that. I wouldn't, please. Nine. Where am I? Can you wake her up? Help me. Can somebody please tell me what's happening? Eight. I, I'll be a good boy. I promise I won't do it again, Daddy. I. I'll be a good boy. Seven. You get out of my house. I'm lying to in here. Six. I know you can hear me, Molly. Okay, I'm stopping this. What? Uh, it's Molly, locked. I know you can hear me. Faith, what the hell is going on? I want Molly to look in the Bible's binding. Five. That's where I hid it. She needs to take it and go before Four. he finds out. Three. Who are these people? Molly, please. I need someone who will listen. <gasps> the key's away. You have to look in the water. One, and you're awake. Molly. Honey, you okay? Whatever's happening here? This is not helping. Look, I can't honestly say I understand what's going on. But I do know that I, I can't stand to see Marlene in any more pain. I know you've tried your best, but I think the best possible thing for all of us right now is just to end the therapy. So you're going to just deny everything that you have just seen and heard? What does Marley say about this? Well, she doesn't remember anything that happened at the clinic. We have a responsibility to do everything we can to help your niece. We? Marley's my responsibility, and I have to look out for her and do what's best for her. So you're just going to fire me? That's it. Just I'll leave, and that's it. Come on, please, Faith. This is difficult for me. Look, I, I want the two of us to remain friends. Wait, you want us to remain friends, but you're not going to let me be around Marley? Is that right? No, I just... Look, please, Faith. Can we talk about this in a couple of days when we've had a chance to calm down? Please take the check. I think it's the best thing. When I met you, I told you this is not about the money. It's never been about the money. It's all about Marley. All I want to do is help her, and I'd actually like to help you, Mason. I'm sorry. Congratulations. You won. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Yes, you do. You understand perfectly. You've never approved of my profession, but Marley needs more help than you or Mr. Charles can give, so if you need me, please call. I, uh, I know you love her, and I know you're going to do the right thing, okay?
Megan. What's happening? Where's Marley? Are, are you all right? Where is she? I know how to end this. Oh, uh, she's gone. She went with Mrs. Carr. Where? Uh, they're gone to the lake house. They're going to spend some time there. The lake house. Where is it? It's in the Berkshires, near Mumford. That's near where I used to work. Uh, okay, Come what's, on. What's, let's go. Let's what's go going on? It's all right. I'm a friend of Dr. Hardy's. Has she mentioned me? Yeah. What happened to you? I had an accident. But I'm okay now. Now that you're here. I want to show you something. that, don't you? But don't cry, Marley. It's not your fault. Come on, this is really important. I'm gonna go find 
faster. Hey, hey, no. hey, hey. Just... We have to get there in one piece if we're going to be any help to her. My brother died on this road. I'm so glad I can finally talk to you. Where are we going? I want to show you where I live now. No, but it's close by. Is it much further? Not too much. I can't see how you live out here. I don't see any houses. Well, that's what I want to show you. That's why I'm so glad you can hear me. We should go back. It's just a few steps in the water. Come on, you can wash the dirt off your boots. I don't want to. It's okay. You can trust me. Right over here.
so sorry. I lost you. I, I should have tried to find you. I, uh, I should have tried harder. Don't be sorry. This wasn't just for you. Just to let you know it wasn't your fault. It was to put right a wrong. To tell a hidden truth. So that you'd know. So we'd all know. So that I can leave. Services. Yes, please. I need some paramedics. Uh, Ryan Park Road. There's been an accident. Hurry, please. There is an injured child. Uh, 20 miles outside of town, just past the big bend. Hey, please. The best thing for the family. No one needs to know. It won't change a thing. What's happening? They're waiting for you. You should go. I'm okay now. Megan's gone now. Who's Megan? Someone Dr. Hardy used to know. Faith. Is Megan gone for good? Yeah, she is, kiddo. 
Who was she? Um, a girl like you and a girl like me. Is she ever coming back? No. She doesn't have to. So, are you going to give me a copy? You're going to make me come to the bookstore for the signing. A copy of what? The book. Oh, there is not going to be a book. That's not what this was about for me. Well, you're not going to document it. No. But this is the most extraordinary evidence of, of spiritual existence I've ever come across. Well, you know it happened and I know it happened, but there's no physical proof. What about Mason? Oh, Mason. Mason didn't see Megan. I mean, he knows something happened, but I think right now he's just debating if I'm completely insane or if it was this isolated, stress-induced incident. But Marley saw her. She did. But I mean, who's going to believe the word of a 10-year-old girl? And besides, do you know what a psych class would say? Our psych class would have said that it was my subconscious that led me to the pond to find Megan. And you know what? That would have been my analysis back in the day. And now? Now? Um, just because you can't see something doesn't mean it's not there. <laughs> All right, ladies. I'm off to make dinner. I don't offer to help or anything. I'll be fine, really. I'm here to serve. As it should be. <laughs> no, don't! <laughs> talk to us? Oh, it depends. On what? On if we want to listen. If we're ready to listen. Will I see my parents again? One day. I miss them. Did you know that your parents are actually with you right now? They can see you at home. They can see you at school. They can see you on the swings. Right here. <gasps> oh, no! I got you. Should we go in and see what your uncle's up to? Yeah? Yeah. And if we don't like what he made, you know what we can do? Order pizza? Yes! I'll race you. Okay, okay we're gonna go. What a girl wants. It's the Cosmopolitan TV sneak peek on W. Look derriere, looks really rather ravishing. A new channel, a new attitude. Fun, bold, sexy. Can we get out of here? I have a three-way to go to.